What's up everyone, Vu of Envu Films, back with another video. And yeah, I'm dressed a little bit nice today because I'm about to go out on an actual shoot for a client. It's actually a wedding anniversary party. And I know what you guys are thinking. Some of you seasoned wedding videographers will know that once in a while we'll get those scam text messages or calls or emails about people having a wedding anniversary. And this is actually a real wedding anniversary. Waiting for my second shooter, co-cinematographer, some of you may know him, Say Park, to arrive. But uh, yeah, today I'm going to be using the Sony ZV-E1 in a professional environment. Meaning, I'm going to put us through its paces. I'm going to use it as if I would use my FX3 on a shoot. Which means it's going to be spent most of the time on a gimbal, getting 4K 60p B-rolls. Um, of the party and the final delivery is actually just like a three to five minute highlight type of video of the event and so we're going to be taking a bunch of little short clips here and there of the party and that is how we're going to get and that's how the uh, Sony ZV-E1 is going to be used so real quick these are some of the things that I'm going to be bringing with me again I'm shooting on the ZV-E1 right now there is two tripods in here travel size two tripod heads and of course one light stand sony a7 IV, um 135 gm 70 to 180 tamron um some uh, audio cables just in case i need them there's no speeches or anything but this is kind of like a just in case bag or just in case case of course it is you know, airport carry-on size. And then here is my lighting bag. It has everything I need for my three Lightman's LC30 by. Say Park has just arrived with his fancy EV truck. This Ford Lightning probably has a bunch of Juin gimbals in the back of the truck bed because he's a uh, Jewin ambassador. There he is, smiling like he always is, happy, typical YouTube douchebag, smiling when he knows he's on a YouTube video. That is him. Anyways, while he's getting his um, self situated, here is my main camera bag. So this one has, let's see. Sony FX3, Sony FX30, 50 millimeter GM lens, um, DJI Mavic Air 2S and the remote. This is a Samyang 35 millimeter VAF lens, which I'll be using primarily on the ZV-1 right now. It's the Tamron 20 to 40 that's being mounted on it. And I have another bag. This little bag right here has the Samyang VAF 24 and 75. So I'm gonna be carrying this bag around while I'm shooting. Switching on and off gimbal because of course, the VAF series um, Samyang lenses are all the same size, weight, balancing and all that stuff. So it will be balancing on my gimbal, my DJI RS3. And of course, the little bag, I'll be able to switch out my lenses really quickly without having to rebalance my gimbal because again, they're all the same size. So that's it. So that's it. I'm going to be using it all on the Sony ZV-1 today. And uh, we'll see if it overheats or not. There he is. He probably has like 18, he probably has 18 Juin um, gimbals in his backpack. <laughs> that's the oldest one I got. <laughs> you did not bring the big one. Did well, it's bring... only three hours. If it was all day, I, I might. I pushed it, but no, three hours. Okay, this. you got it, man. Those, those old school uh, Korean tiny. muscles. Yeah, I've heard yeah. that before. That's what she said. <laughs> um, Sorry, I'm late. No, you're not even late, dude. <laughs> All right, say so, so Is today. It like minus five minutes. <laughs> so <laughs> minus today, Asian time. today, my challenges with this camera yeah. is I'm going to use it 
as if it's an, an FX3. So however I use my FX3 on like a full wedding day. Oh, wow. So obviously this is not I like mean, you get the same wedding. result, supposedly. Yeah, so I'm, better. I'm just trying to see if I could use it as 4K60 and if it's going to oh. overheat or anything like that. Oh, okay. Like, can you use it as I like see. your like B-roll main body camera that's not sitting there on a tripod for like 30 okay. minutes plus? Okay, that's a really good test. Real world test. Yeah, my, right guess, my guess is that it's not going to overheat. What is your guess? Yeah, I mean, I'm wearing long sleeve right now, so. Yeah. It's like 70. Yeah, think, it's but, nice and comfortable. Yeah, I don't think so. Camera. I think the way I film, I don't think it's gonna. But we'll see. We'll yeah. see by the end of the video yeah. if it overheats or not. Yeah. All right, guys, so we are here at the uh, location of the shoot. Right back there. And that's Say right there with his. Ready. Jewin gimbal. And, uh,. Gotta fly this drone, so. Windy. That's wedding for you. Yeah, it's like reading. All right. I don't think you guys could hear me that well because of all the music in the back, but that is a wrap. The uh, ZV-1 did not overheat at all. The entire time, uh, about three, a little bit over three hours of shooting. 4K 60, longest duration was 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, not even, a, not even a warning of overheating. So it's not bad. Plus the weather, it's kind of like 60 degrees right now, so helps. I guess, it, it, yeah, it probably helps. You know, you probably want, don't want to do it 90 degrees in the summertime, but if you're trying to use this camera as just getting B-roll, those quick two, three minute clips here and there uh, to do some type of like highlight reel or something like that, it should work pretty well. So it's been a couple days since I went out and did that wedding anniversary shoot and I actually did additional testing with the Sony ZV-E1. I went out with uh, my family, my wife and kids for an early Mother's Day hangout um, to celebrate Mother's Day because on actual Mother's Day, I have to travel to California to film a wedding. So we decided to celebrate early and I used the Sony ZV-E1 for B-roll getting typical shots of my family. Like, as I would always do when we go travel, when we do events, I always bring a camera and I film them just to make family videos, whatever. And Sony ZV-E1, I use it just as I would use my FX3 or Sony A7S III or whatever. And 4K60 XAVCS, no overheating, worked just as I would expect an FX3 to work. The only real challenges I noticed with the, um, the anniversary shoot and my family shoot is the ergonomics of this camera because it is small, which I appreciate, especially when I have this thing strapped, especially when I'm walking around with this a camera strap with this on my neck. Being small, compact, lightweight, it's fantastic. And I would always take this with me for traveling versus taking my you know, full FX3. But for an actual professional shoot like that wedding anniversary and holding it like this this is when the large ergonomics of an fx3 comes into play where you have all the buttons it's easy to go through cine ei go through 800 and 12800 iso with just one click um going through you know shutter speed aperture and all that stuff whereas this one zv1 is a bit slower i'm probably probably like half a second slower with adjusting settings on the zv1 as i would be on fx3 and on a professional shoot it makes a difference um, so clearly as all of you should know this camera is not designed specifically for professionals whereas the FX3 what I'm filming on right now with the 24 millimeter what I'm filming on right now with the 24 millimeter GM this camera is a professional rig and going forward I will always use my FX3 for any professional shoot this is just my vlog camera, my take anywhere with family type of camera. With that said, I'm actually gonna do some additional tests right now with this ZV-E1. A commenter, I forgot who, 
mentioned on uh, my other video to test out the 11 millimeter f1.8 APS-C lens to see how it looks in dynamic active stabilization because mode because that mode is pretty much a one and a half times crop AK Super 35. Essentially you could use any APS-C lens on this full frame camera with active dynamic active stabilization to get really stable shots and use the whole all the real estate that lens has to offer. So we'll go ahead and test that right now. So right now I'm on the Sony 11 millimeter f1.8 APS-C lens on dynamic active stabilization and I'm just casually walking and vlogging and this should be pretty stable because apparently this digital stabilization that Sony does on its cameras is better when you use Sony lenses versus my other test I was using a Samyang lens. So this Sony 11 millimeter f1.8 should be more stable than that lens. And again, this is dynamic active stabilization. With an APS-C lens on this full frame Sony ZV-E1 and you tell me how that looks. From the looks of it, it seems like it's quite stable compared to the Samyang f2.8 that I was testing the other day. Let's do a quick handheld pushing shot with it, um, with me on the other side of the camera. I'm going to just do a walking shot, um, walking parallaxing shot with this lens. Another parallaxing, typical gimbal type shot. Let me know what you think about that. I think it's quite stable. And of course, this setup right now is very light. So just out of curiosity, if I were to use this for my own videos, I wanna see if it's like how is Sony getting this, how is Sony getting this uh, quality cropping into a 12 megapixel sensor? Because we know cropping into a 12 megapixel sensor one and a half times, you're not gonna have actual 4K resolution. That resolution, I don't know what it is, but um, you would assume the image quality would degrade. So I did some tests, I compared the 11 millimeter full frame but with active dynamic active stabilization on versus just going into super 35 mode um, with standard stabilization in hd because when you shoot super 35 mode with the zv1 and sony a7 fx3 it will go to hd the dynamic active stabilization mode in 4k full frame actually looks more detailed than super 35 hd so instead of going into APS-C mode shooting Super 35 um, with your Sony ZV-1, you should just shoot 4K dynamic active stabilization if you want the best Super 35 footage. Um, I also I did the same test with the 15 millimeter G lens, which is an APS-C lens, and the results seem consistent dynamic active in full frame looks better to me than in looks better than super 35 mode hd and i also did the same tests with a 24 millimeter gm and those results are consistent as well dynamic active mode in that one and a half times crop looks better than the super 35 mode in hd and again, if you're wondering why I did Super 35 mode HD is because that is the only mode, HD is the only thing you could do in Super, in Super 35 mode. HD is the only thing you could do in Super 35 mode. To do this test even further, I wanted to compare actual standard stabilization, full frame picture quality, image quality with full frame with dynamic active on that crops in one and a half times that image quality 
And what I have found was that the dynamic active stabilization, the image quality is quite good. And to be quite honest with you, even with pixel peeping, um, I, I can't tell you that I, I would be able to, you know, peep out what the difference is, um, especially with good lighting and all that stuff. So I just took the 24 millimeter G Master, I put it in 4K full frame and put, on, put it on dynamic active stabilization, which crops in one and a half times. And I compared it at uh, F1.4 aperture and compared it against the 35 millimeter GM in standard stabilization 4K full frame at F2 just so the overall out of focus areas is the same you know the depth of field would be the same between the 35 and 24 millimeter because 35 millimeter at F2 would look similar to a 24 millimeter at F1.4 in APS-C crop in a 1.5 times crop which is again what the dynamic stabilization does so and it just kind of looks you know it's hard to pixel peep um even when i like zoom in and i get i guess the only way i could really tell is if we zoomed into like 200 percent and the 35 millimeter full frame image probably looks looks better in terms of just overall detail but that is really pixel peeping and zooming in, especially if this you know content is for YouTube and stuff like that. So, but yeah, Sony has done some crazy stuff. I'm probably going to use this camera in dynamic active mode from time to time uh, if I need to. You know, if I'm using this you know on like a quick run and gun shoot um, with family or my vlogs or whatever and maybe even professional settings when I just need a quick shot uh, that's really, really stable and I didn't have my gimbal available but I had the camera available, I might just put a lens on this camera, just get some quick gimbal-like shots, call it a day. Um, so yeah, Sony doing some incredible stuff here. Um, again, I have not had this camera overheat at all, not even uh, overheat warning um, at all during all of these uh, shoots and tests. Um, so again, I don't know how some of these other guys out there are getting this camera to overheat. I would say that I am shooting in 75 degrees and under temperatures. So that might be it. Would I trust this camera in 90 degree weather as my tripod camera during a wedding shoot? Probably not. In a pinch, of course, I would just do it. If I for some reason something happened to my other camera and I had this camera as a backup, I would certainly put it out there in 90 degree heat and just see what it does. You know, worst comes to worst, I'll put it in HD because HD, HD won't heat up the camera as much and HD in this Sony ZV-1 is not too far off in quality than 4K. Um, as in, I have this example here using the you know Sony GM35 in HD and in 4K to compare the shots. And obviously 4K is gonna be more detailed, but HD is not too far off, especially if you just needed it to be, you know, another angle, another shot that you would cut to type of thing. Um, I'm generally really just, I'm really impressed with this camera. Again, the only downsides to it is when you're on the other side of the camera and not vlogging and trying to like shoot, change settings and stuff like that, is definitely a little bit more cumbersome than using an FX3, and that's to be expected. The screen quality is not great. It's literally, it's only slightly better than an A7 III uh, screen. It's worse, the screen is worse than the A7S III, um, which, you know, is a downer, but it's usable. You know, that's, it, it, it's fine. You know, I get, I get by with it, but I do wish the screen quality is better, especially, pretty much I wish Sony I wish all Sony cameras had better screen quality. It's pretty sad that a camera from Sony that makes Bravia televisions and 4K phone screens can't put a decent screen on their camera. It's pretty, uh, pretty sad, but uh, that's where we're at. But I think for the most part, can't really complain um, with the options that we're getting these days. There's some dudes out here 
sure, you know, there's some Panasonic D bags out there, and I'm not against Panasonic. I think their S5 uh, Mark II, Mark II X, it's a great camera. Um, I actually highly recommend it if you're just starting off. Um, Panasonic's probably not a bad system to get into. You know, they're over there comparing the, they're over here comparing Panasonic S5 II to the Sony ZV-1 because the pricing is similar at $2,200 but they're two different types of cameras aimed at two entirely different markets. And hey, Panasonic, come at me when you can do 4K 60 full frame without being cropped in and not have a bunch of rolling shutter. Come at my Sony fanboy ass when you have something like that. Because you don't. And, um, and of course, there's other Sony D-Bag fanboys out there complaining about the pricing of this camera, saying it's too expensive, being $2,200, all that crap. You could probably make $2,200 filming some kid's birthday and delivering a three to five minute highlight, but you won't because when the mom contacted you, you said, oh, I'm a documentary filmmaker. I don't do that kind of thing. Uh, you are a lazy piece of trash who probably are trash in your work because you could have went out and made $2,200 filming a birthday for two or three hours of your time, editing it in two or three hours of your time, made $2,200 in less than eight hours. Could have bought this camera and used it for whatever. But no, you are a documentary filmmaker and somehow you can't afford a $2,200 camera because again, you're trash. And uh, step up your game before you say some shit. Anyways, with that said, till next time, lighten up. Hi, man. That the Sony ZV-E1? Yeah, this is a Sony ZV-E1. Bought it with my own money. Oh my god, that camera hit track. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Small, compact, and lightweight. Perfect for vloggers, perfect for traveling. This camera's fantastic. Same sensor as a Sony A7S III, FX3. If you want to be the bat, if you want to be professional, if you want to be a war winning $2,200, you need to get the Panasonic S5 Mark II X. Bro, the Panasonic S5 Mark II X is a great camera. But the Sony ZV-1 is marketed towards a specific type of content creator. The Panasonic H5 Mark II X have better cinematic feature. DCI 4K, 6K recording opening ray. Dude, I'm a videographer for a living. I don't even need all that, yet alone a basic content creator. Let me show you. Bro, I thought you were going to show me some footage. You show me a spec sheet? It because I have no money. Buy my how to be a cinematic filmmaker without camera matter clad. Only $29.99.